that you're watching and or listening to Real Conversations with Jacob Young. The Real Conversations podcast, of course, is sponsored by Boys Town. Boys Town has been saving children, healing families for over 100 years. And, of course, by Lane Frost brand, made for the champion and you. Now, we've got a first today on the podcast, a trip to the moon with a whole panel of guests. Now, history books remember the names of astronauts like Neil Armstrong, John Glenn, and in the short film, Prepare for Launch, I had the privilege of playing one of NASA's unsung heroes, John S. Bull. And when his health condition sidelined his dream to walk on the moon, instead of giving up, John Bull somehow found the strength to pick himself up and become the chief engineer with NASA and assist in over 80 shuttle launches. Now, thanks to the film Prepare for Launch, John Bull will finally be recognized for his lifetime contribution to space travel. My guest this week's are my Prepare for Launch family, of course, um, our director, Vince Williams, McTeer Parker, who plays fellow astronaut James Irwin, my son in the movie, Ethan Pogue, and last but not least, my on-screen wife, Amanda Baker Browning. And if Amanda and I look familiar together, it's because you also know her as the babe to my JR and TV's All My Children. You know what time it is. It's time to prepare for launch with Real Conversations with Jacob Young. Amanda, hey. Ethan, hey. Nick, here. hello, hello. <laughs> good to see you guys. Hey, how are ya? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's good to see everybody's beautiful faces. Uh, Ethan is now a, a senior in college. He's and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> senior college. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'll just started out. high school. That's awesome. That's how it is. Man. It's, it's awesome. And how old were you when we shot that? Ooh, what was that, Jacob? Was that seven that was years two? ago? <laughs> 1979. <laughs> yeah. I believe that was when I was 13. 13. I think I remember 13. you were 13. Yeah. I was in seventh grade. Oh my gosh. Well, crazy you're, time you're flies the grown man it's yeah. unreal it looks like you can you can slam on michael jordan now <laughs> yeah i know so yeah you know I, I i first you know i wanted to talk to vince about you know what drew him to this picture but you know i really want to hear from everyone something that they enjoyed or a memory about making prepare for launch and amanda why don't we start with you okay um well, I had, I really wanted to do a period, um, a period piece and I didn't really care what it looked like or, or what, or how much you were paid, how much I was paid, you know, none of that mattered, but I really was thinking about it. And, um, you know, we had, we had just reconnected back, um, on Instagram uh, as we did an Instagram live. And when you brought that up to me, I was like, okay, um, the timing is, is, not a coincidence. And so I was just really excited because it was something that I was longing to do. So I knew that um, not only was the story going to be uh, really compelling and the, of course my character, um, you know, Nancy, she was, she's very strong and, you know, she has a force in John's life. So um, I was just really excited about everything that kind of came together with that. So it was really special and it was special for us to, to reconnect again. Second part, before I go to everybody else, how important is it to do something out of the artistic love versus something like being, you know, paid for, obviously we all want to get paid money, but if there's something you really are attracted to as far as a, a character, a script, how important is that? Well, it's very important because I feel like in, in the entertainment industry, especially in the acting world, um, you really have to have a passion for it. You have to have a love for it um, and a love for playing different characters because not all the time is it going to be that, you know, big paycheck. So it's it's important to be open to all different ideas and um, and really consider really what the piece is about and and who's going to be involved and in the making of it. So for me. Um, you know, when you were telling me about it and, and sort of the background and what the story was going to be, um, I immediately felt connected with the character. So for me, that was probably the most important. And, um, 
if it's just about the paycheck, then you're not really going to enjoy the process and you're not going to enjoy really becoming the character and bringing them to life and, and going through the process of what it all takes because it's a lot, a lot of times it's the sit around and wait and you know, it's not as glamorous as it looks when it's all put together, but the process of it is what you have to really love. So that for me was most important. Well said. And you, you yeah. absolutely crushed it, crushed it in, in this. So thank you. Well, you guys made it easy. <laughs> But I do have to say, you know, payday is pretty nice too. Well, yes, <laughs> of course. No, wait a minute. You guys got paid? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's coming in the mail, McTeer. It's coming. <laughs> okay. I, I trust you. Um, well, you know, the, the pay was really a bonus for sure because uh, to play real life people in, in real life scenarios is such a crucial time. Uh, not just in world history, but in American history, too. I mean, this was really a space race. This was a, a very competitive, very serious thing. And a lot of money was um, was spent on on NASA. So you really I just immediately felt the weight and the responsibility, as we all did, to, you know, to play these characters as honestly as we could. And I know we all you know appreciated um, the chance to do so. It was a wonderful experience. Absolutely. Yeah. And you were awesome in it. Ethan, how about you? Man, I mean, when I was 13, I mean, I loved the the setting of it. I mean, our, our first shot was what at that house and just seeing the cars, the outfits. I mean, it was just a, a great time in uh, American history. I just really liked that. I mean, driving around that that teal uh, Ford uh, around those streets was mm. was an amazing experience. Um, and I really just just grasp it onto that. And I mean, yeah, the, the pay was nice and, and getting that on your, your resume, but I mean, just, just being in it is just a, a, a real achievement and it's just really nice. Yeah, sure. It was man. And, and you start starting so young. Is there any advice you give any youngsters? I mean, now, cause you're like, you know, you're almost, almost like uh, ready to start into the workforce in this world. <laughs> Yeah. Since the day we shot this, um, any, any advice you give any youngsters uh, that want to get into film and TV like you're doing right now? You know, really, this might sound corny, but I, I mean, you know, everybody says this, but just don't give up. And I feel like a lot of people miss that. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you know, uh, everybody um, doesn't want to give up. But if you just grasp on, I mean, it's never too late to go big. I mean, a bunch of these, um, you know, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, I mean, they're billionaires. But I mean, they they made their companies, you know, in their in their 30s, you know, 40s, Jeff Bezos. Um, and, you know, so just don't give up. Don't say it's too late. That's, that's great advice, man, because I always yeah. say, I say, turn your dreams into actions. Right. Exactly. You turn your dreams into actions. You'll never be sorry a day in your life. Um, right. uh, you may be sorry because you're still working at the restaurant, but... <laughs> But you're still fulfilling the dream of being the actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, in the film, when John Bull finds out that his condition is going to rob him of his dream to walk on the moon, he said to Amanda's character that he's a bird with no wings. Mm -hmm. Have any of you ever felt that feeling? I only feel that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we all do. Yeah. Um, as human Definitely. beings, I mean, I think that's part of the human experience is, is absorbing letdowns. That's right. Yeah. It's, um, you know, in life you go through different seasons and, you know, when you're on that high, you know, when you've been able to work consistently and, you know, when something happens because, you know, when the, when that job ends, you really don't know when the next job will come about. So, um, for me personally, me relating it to being in this industry, there's been many times where I'm like, is it over? Am I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm a wife and I'm and a mom and a mom. And I, I love those things. I, I, they're amazing, but you know, when you have a passion that you want to try to fulfill, um, and, a lot of times when you feel like it's just a dry season that you, you do feel that, you know? So, but like Ethan said, it's like, you have to kind of just keep focused and realize that it's a season and that, you know, timing yeah. is everything. 
So you have to really just be ready for, for when things pick up again, because this day and age, you don't have to be a certain age or a certain look or anything, you know, to, to, to play any kind of part, you know, so that's, that's really encouraging. Yeah. There truly is an ebb and flow in this industry. You know, it's feast or famine. You're working, you're making money. Then you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you have a job, then you don't. <laughs> <laughs> True. You're, you're saying lines to somebody, then you're not. That's right. So there's a, you know, so there's a real struggle inside artistically saying, I wish I could do that full time. I wish I could be doing that. How do you guys fill your days? with you know is there something that i met man i know you have a family and mcteer i know uh you know you have a son and and i know ethan that you're in school but how do you fill those voids in your life artistically when you're not able to perform um i've been watching uh binge watching better call saul <laughs> <laughs> i mean but you know you can you can watch um you can you can watch you know your favorite film and tv shows with a sort of industry perspective and just yeah. you can be encouraged by you know you see people that you know personally that are working you can be encouraged by that uh me personally i've been auditioning a lot lately and you know it's it's not they're not all dream jobs but it's a chance to just flex that creative muscle it's a it's a it's a gift to be able to perform as an actor you know the getting the job is great um but at least in that one or two minutes when you're taping you know you get to be an actor that, that that's your part it's your part right then and there you know whether you get it or not you know that's your chance to to live your art right there um and it's important to do that so Definitely. true yeah yeah uh, we yeah. Yeah, I, I, I audition quite a bit and um, I just auditioned for the first time with my family the other day and we have an opportunity to film all together for something. So, you know, but it's, it's few and far between when those things happen. So when you do get those two minutes to perform for whatever casting director or whatever production company, um, you know, it's like you gotta, you're, you're the character, you know? So, um, you know, you don't take it as a process of like, man, I just got to get through this so I can book the part, but you really mm -hmm, have to mm -hmm. enjoy the whole, the whole process of it, you know? Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, with having a family and I've auditioned with my kids before too, um, because they ought to, you know, when you're a parent, you have a family and your kids, you know, I remember as a, as a kid looking at my dad and I said, I want to be a glass man too. My dad was like, you don't want to be a glass man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want this life. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, with my kids, I look at that and, and I go, okay, you know, if you're really interested, really there's no better person to be able to teach them yeah. than their parents. Yeah. You know, you just got to steer clear from like, I told you to do it this way. Exactly. <laughs> oh Yeah. Uh, that's a surefire way to have them be like, I'm done, you know, yeah, and exactly. I'd never force them to do anything as long as they're enjoying it, you know, so it's, it's, um, it's something that, you know, we're just kind of very lightly exploring right now. We'll see how it goes, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how about you? Ethan? Um, yeah. So, I mean, what I usually see throughout the year is, you know, you have this, part of the year where you're doing all these auditions and then the next year you're filming. But sometimes, you know, if you don't get these parts, you have that gap in that year where you're like, I have nothing to do. So I've really been focusing on uh, just athletics, really. I mean, my school doesn't have a, uh, a uh, athletics program because it's, it's, it's pretty small. Um, so I've been doing, I've been doing fencing. Uh, that's good for, for the legs, but I've, I've really just been working out, you know, just improving on my body you know, just filling in those, those gaps of, uh, just being bored pretty much. I mean, that's kind of what I, uh, what I have been feeling, you know, a couple years back, you know, I had that gap and I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> so you young ladies in your life notice the gaps you've been filling in. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I believe so. Yes. Uh, yes, Jacob. I would imagine. So, I mean, you're like <laughs> six or five now. <laughs> yeah. Just go straight into the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> so Ethan, we actually we have a this very beautiful scene in the in the film where you give 
your dad, who's me, of course, some great advice about being a team player. What does being a team player mean to each of you? Starting with you, Ethan. Um, you know, I think that was a really huge turning point in that film. Um, I think it just shows that uh, his son was just telling him that you can still be a part of it. You know, just because you don't fit into one role doesn't mean that you you just have to quit. You can take other, you know, jobs, uh, just as he did. Um, you know, I think it just shows that uh, that there, there are other things that you can do to help help a, a project that you're doing or a purpose, something like that. Yeah. What does it mean to you, Amanda? Well, I think a lot of times, especially, well, I grew up an only child and um, being in the, the, the industry, I think a lot of times it's like, oh, I'm used to the spotlight, you know, being on me and in front of the camera and things like that. But I think also in the same sense, um, when those things aren't happening, um, it's really so much more about, you know, in general in life about helping others, being there for others. I've had that, that's been a, a life lesson for me in, in marriage and in life with friends and, and past friends with people that I don't even know. So for me, it's, it, it's, it's basically been about more of stepping out outside of myself. And, and a lot of times when we can be very consumed with, with what we're doing and say, you know, it's actually a lot more freeing to be there for other people and to help other people with, you know, what, what I've been given, you know, to, to be able to help others. So, um, yeah, just to add on to that, it's, it's, I think it just adds so much more to your life. Yeah, absolutely. And how about, how about you, McTeer? Uh, you know, what does it mean to be a team player? Um, team player. I, I think you can think about it in terms of, you know, what, what what little role can I, you know, insert myself? What little moments can I find to sort of, you know, take uh, take on a bit of the responsibility for a moment? And it's like you get to pass that off. It's not all on you. It's not all on them. It's like, you know, everybody just kind of finds their niche and is able to contribute just a little bit. I think we overwhelm ourselves, you know, so much with, you know, decision-making and trying to make the right choice. And we're just getting so overwhelmed and, and thinking that we have to, to take on everything and do everything and have total control. Um, but I think it's just about finding, you know, what you can do in your little role to help out. Absolutely. Great advice, man. And it's so great because Vince Williams, the director of Prepare for Launch, just arrived. <laughs> What's up, guys? What yeah. is up? now? Great it's to see you guys. Yeah, great to see you too. Welcome, welcome to the podcast. Um, so we were just, uh, you know, we were just asking some questions, but oddly enough, it was almost perfect timing. Uh, <laughs> great. I, I was going to just ask you, what was one of the biggest obstacles about making this film, Vince? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's one to hit me with right out of the gun. Uh, one of the biggest obstacles, I think that the, the obstacles to the film early on were the fact that we were addressing NASA in a low budget short film. So that is, that's already pretty much going to scratch any film because where do you get that type of set design? Where do you get the, those type of locations? Um, and and that's, that's the reason the film didn't go through for quite a long time is because you know, you have to figure out where you're getting all of those uh, locations and that. Um, and that that was one of the things I think the other thing that and I know we're talking to, about actors today, but I think another one, once we got that stuff, another one of the big things that broke was uh, getting you, Jacob Young, as, as the lead, because uh, I remember we were sitting there at uh, with with our group of of people and we had John Bull up on the screen and somebody, Mel, Melissa Howard, just happened to walk past at the right time. We were saying, we need somebody that looks like this and that can act really well. Um, and she had you on speed dial. And it's just, it's just the craziest thing. You know, I don't, I don't have any famous people on speed dial. So um, it was just crazy that she walked past in that moment. And, 
and I was literally talking to you like I don't even know like an hour later, and you were all gung ho about the film. Like you, you think the story is incredible, and you know, it was I was just like, wow, this is, you know, first of all, I'm talking to Jacob Young, and then secondly, like he thinks this project's incredible, and he wants to be a part of it in any way he can. So uh, that was really a huge breakthrough, and then that just led to the rest of the cast participating because you know Amanda had worked together before. We had launched some casting calls and, uh, you know, I, I think with each of the actors in this, it's one of those things where we looked at a lot of people, but I just knew when I saw the audition and when you guys went through it that I was like, this, this is the person to play this role. And it, it comes from a lot of different, uh, for different reasons. But I think when I'm looking at people, I look at people that understand these characters and you guys really, your backgrounds and everything that you had done previously in your life and how your life was, I, I kind of knew that it was going to, you were going to be able to understand the real emotions and the truth behind these characters. And that is one of the big things that's driving the film is just these incredible performances that you guys turned out. And uh, it was really just the best thing about it. <laughs> maybe not the, maybe not the biggest obstacle, but the best thing about it for me was, working with all of you by far. It was it was just, it was really an incredible experience. You guys were the utmost professional. It is not what you, what I thought in my mind, because I come from the documentary world, what I thought in my mind, what dealing with actors was like, it was nothing like that. You guys were all so very supportive. Jacob was such a leader and he really, you all just really grasped the characters um, in this film and, and something to watch. It really is something to watch your guys' performances. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. Uh, I I do have to say and give you uh, a mad amount of respect and, and kudos as well. Um, you know, the moment uh, I showed my wife the trailer and 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 just you know, so she could get a feel, she's like, "Wow, this looks like something I could be watching tonight on TV yeah. or on, on film," yeah. and it really embodies that time. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that time period, of course, the space race, and you captured that so fantastically. So thank you for that. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, no problem at all. I mean, it was very hard. <laughs> it was very hard. But no, I mean, really, really, uh, no, it, it's, uh, I, I just love the film. You know, I, I love the film and I love everything that we did. And we really focus on the nuances of the 1960s and NASA and then also the nuances of the family, the family unit, and then the buddy, buddy friendship relationship between James Irwin and and John Bull. So that's one of the, uh, the also testament to you guys is just these little emotional nuances in the film that come out because of all the hard work you guys were, you know, the rehearsals that we did, and you know, people don't do this stuff for short films usually, and you guys were just so um, receptive to all the direction and that sort of thing, and it really. It really shows in those little, even just the reactions. I think somebody said that recently, a festival judge said that recently, it's like the reactions are the most telling part of this film. Um, you know, when, when, they're, when they're, you know, reacting to the situations that they're presented with. And I think that is really, you know, where it's at in the end. Man, that Keith Whitley knew what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you say it best. Um, <laughs> So what, what was one of the most important lessons each of you took away from the life story of John Bull? Oh, gosh. Um, Go ahead, Amanda. What do you we'll start there? Yeah. Well, you know, he this was his dream. You know, I mean, he wanted to be the first man to walk on the moon and to be faced with, you know, not not just um, a life situation, but a health situation. You know, it can be just absolutely devastating. Um, but in the end, you know, knowing what what happened and how much he was involved with so many launches, um, it was what Ethan was talking about earlier. Where you know, it's there are so many other ways that you can be pivotal in, in something so, so important and still be able to live out his dream, even though he didn't exactly walk on the moon, but he was, he was such an important role in that. So for me, um, just learning that, you know, it's, 
it's, it's, there's, there's so many different ways you can go about accomplishing um, dreams that you have. that might not look exactly the way you thought they would, you know, so you have to have an open mind and, um, and just remember that. So that, that was, that was something that I really learned because I didn't really know much about, about him or even about his, his wife who was involved with that and was such a support system. That's why it's such a great story because so many people didn't know about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. The unsung hero. How about you, McTeer? Oh, well, I thought it was really interesting when um, when I was first cast and realized this is a real life uh, individual that, that we were, you know, all playing, essentially. Um, I found this book. It's called To Rule the Night. And it's essentially a, an autobiography of, of my character, of uh, James Irwin. And I mean, it, he's an unsung hero, too. So, I mean, it was, you know, they're... They, <laughs> There was, there was that sort of thinking going into it. Like, I mean, this guy ended up going to the moon. My character did a couple of years later um, for Apollo 15. And he he actually had a heart attack on the moon, um, mm. if you can believe that. Uh, and they, they say that that was actually the best uh, place to have a heart attack just because of the... Uh, the conditions he was in and the suit was in. It's very interesting. Um, so, I mean, I essentially was turned on to this individual in this sort of time period that you really only pick up from like pop culture references mm -hmm. and, and all that growing up. But when you look a little bit deeper, you see like how, like what these people's lives were really like and, and all the different uh, details that were going on with them is just truly fascinating. So, I mean, I, I learned all about this guy um, through this film that I, I never would have known about, honestly. He was like, my doctor's right. I should stop smoking before I went to the <laughs> <laughs> No, back then, everybody smoked. They were smoking in, in, the, in the capsule, I'm sure. We just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they just be honest. I mean, they were strapped to a bomb going there. Yeah. Literally. Um, so uh, what, what did what did you take ab away from that, Vince? Boy, uh, I've been with this character a long time, <laughs> a very long time. Uh, he is somebody that I really relate to. I think I, I, I really relate to his, and I, I think that's one of the great things about the film is that it is in this fantastical world of NASA and, and astronauts and that sort of thing, but ultimately it's a human story and it's about the human spirit and somebody just living their life and having having a you know a downfall or falling down and how they get back up and we we all do that every single day every you know we, we've all had that happen to us many many times and i think that's the universal truth of of prepare for launch is you know just keep getting back up that is a success that makes you a success don't let anybody don't let me tell you what a success is in your life you don't have to achieve incredible incredible things um to have your life be a success and that that really is i don't know that i could have said what i just said without going on this journey of, of this film i i think that's the real realization in my life to 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 researching john bull yeah. and how about you ethan um yeah i think um as amanda said i mean you find a new a new purpose um in your life i think uh, and of course as william said i'm just going to piggyback off y'all um uh you get back up and you can find a new purpose i mean you you realize i mean you realize how much help and work he's put into nasa after that incident and i mean we'll never know how um how many uh, space missions he, he could have done uh, if he didn't have that incident. But, uh, you know, without that, they wouldn't have the guidance of, of John um, and all that. So I think, yeah, uh, when you just get back up, you, you see things differently, really differently. Mm -hmm. That's right. mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, uh, in Prepare for Launch, John Bull's Dream, to be an astronaut, of course, on Apollo, it was to be on Apollo 15, on Real Conversations, everyone, we all take a ride in the Jacob Young time machine. <laughs> so you've been in the time machine or not, you get to ride in this time machine. Uh, if each of you could go back in time, obviously, this question will be sort of rerouted for Ethan's sake. I mean, he is almost 30, going to be 40. <laughs> um, 
But <laughs> if you could go back in time and give some advice to 15 year old selves, ah! what would you tell yourself, Vince? Wow. You guys are hitting me with. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just said something really profound. So now I need to say something stu really stupid um, <laughs> just to balance life out. Oh, man. What would I tell my 15? Um, probably slap myself. I don't know. Um, <laughs> like snap out of it, kid. Um, no, man. Ethan is so much farther along than I ever was. Um, uh, what would I tell myself? I think that, man, oof, I don't know if I have a good answer for that. <laughs> I know what I would tell myself. I would say just don't worry about anything because in 2020, you're going to get cast and prepare for launch. <laughs> And everything is going to be okay. I mean, honestly, my answer is I would I would probably say, hey, kid, do the opposite at least 50% of the time of what you think you're going to do. You know, be but be be content to be helpful to people, be content to have gratitude, be you know, be content to um to enjoy enjoy a simple day. You know, yeah. be, mm -hmm. be, uh, make yourself available to, to allow yourself to be happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I thought, you know, you, you have this kind of vision in your head, I think, especially for maybe a lot of women that, um, your life's going to go a certain way and, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to maybe get married by a certain age or, um, have kids by a certain age. And, uh, I, I think I would just tell myself, you know, to, um, just go go into it with with an open mind, and um, and really never never be afraid to pursue pursue your dreams. Because I think for a long time I was I was on this path of thinking that you know I I th there was no way that I could ever leave home and I could pursue something like that. Um, I was very much a homebody and I was shy and um, just had all these fears. But um, but I, I think I would just tell myself to really just. Um, just, just to let go of that fear, you know, and just um, have to hold everything with an open hand, you know. Yeah. Now wait a minute, Jacob. Do you actually have a time machine? Is that why you're? <laughs> Are we doing this for real? Please go back and slap me as I'm a fifteen-year-old. So <laughs> snap out of it. <laughs> yeah. I I might actually have a time machine. We'll never know. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you if I do, but. <laughs> If I did, I would invite you. I would. I, you guys could take a take a trip in the real time machine. Yes. Well, yeah. that was all great answers. Um, so there's one. There's another question, and Amanda's been on my podcast before. But my sponsor's motto is "He ain't heavy. He's my brother." Meaning, in our lives, in the lives before these great lives that we're leading right now, we've all had to have you know something that's impeded things, whether good or bad, but there's always been a time where we've needed to be carried. Who's carried each of you in that time of need? Vince. Ooh, boy. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, for, for me, uh, I mean, definitely my mom. I mean, my mom's helped me build my acting career. Anyway, she's, she's still carrying me today. I mean, you know, I, uh, I still, uh, I'm not able to drive right now, so she she drives me everywhere to sets. Um, she goes with me to sets. She, she, uh, she manages um, uh, some of the, the, the auditions that I do. So yeah, without her, I don't think I would ever, ever be here today. Definitely. I mean, my father as well, just my parents in general. Yeah. And I think we all, we've all had that, you know, in our, in our childhood, just having that, uh, uh, being dependable on on your parents so yeah just mm -hmm. forever in their debt yeah they're great people i know them very well they're, they're amazing people <laughs> yeah so, yeah i think my answer would be that i do believe in a higher power so the the i think god has been with me through everything he's he's with he's with me through you know through when i'm alone and when i'm with people and in everything i'm doing and i i think that um, if I didn't, if I didn't have that belief system, you know, I, I'd probably be a very different place right now. And I wouldn't, yeah. I certainly would not be here 
with all you guys talking about this amazing film. I mean, yeah. you know, that's that's the 15 year old. I would have never believed that I would have been doing this at 15. So for me, it's like, yeah, it, it's a, uh, it's that has been really what is what is the consistent in my life. Yep. How about you, McTeer? Uh, well, you know, honestly, lately, it's um, I'm so inspired by and, and motivated uh, by my son. Um, you know that my son is six and a half. He's autistic. He's an amazingly energetic um, person. Um, and everybody loves their kids. But to really sit and take time with them and think um, when I'm making different choices in life, you know, what is best for my son? And sort of, you know, putting him first in a very, you know, visceral, a very uh, transparent way has, it's kind of changed my life. You know, you think you can make certain things a priority just by thinking about it and saying, yeah, that's my priority. But until you put that in action, you know, your, your love for your, for your child can, can do amazing things for you. And, you know, and, and also Jacob recently, I, we spoke on the phone and, you know, to maybe better answer your question, you really, you really helped me out. Um, a couple of months back, I was feeling very down. I was living in a different place. And um, just your your kindness of spirit, uh, it honestly, it, it really shifted my entire day that day. Because we forget how amazing we are as people all the time. And uh, when you have someone, you know, that you're close with that's talking to you the way that you're speaking to me, I mean, it totally changed my day. And I, I just want to say I really appreciate that. Wow, man. Well, I mean, that's, that's an easy thing. I'm, I'm there all the time for anybody. And, um, because I've been there, you know, in all those places and I've needed somebody to carry me from time to time and it still happens. And, uh, whether it's my wife, whether it's God, whether it's my kids, you know, even my kids carry me, you know, through those rough patches as much as it should be the other way around. Um, somehow, oddly enough, we fill those voids in our lives. Yeah. Vince, tell everybody the future plans for our short film, Prepare for Launch. Yeah, we just we just started submitting to film festivals and we've gotten into a couple now. So just keep you on the watch, be on the look for that one in Florida, which is going to be amazing. I hope we all get to go down there and, um, you know, hopefully it, it continues to go uh, uh, to festivals. And, um, you know, we do have a feature screenplay written, so that's still an option, uh, you know, to, to see. And I, and I would love to, you know, have this team back and uh, have that experience eventually. But, you know, the feature film world is, <laughs> is, is very, very, is very, very difficult. So, um, but that doesn't mean, you know, it can't happen at any moment. So um, that would be incredible, but definitely look out for the film and fest the short film and festivals. Uh, follow us on our Instagram, uh, prepare for launch film, and um, you'll get all the updates there. Of course. Uh, and it's it's really, you know, anytime anything absolutely gets made, and just so I can convey this 100% clearly to the audience that doesn't know out, out there, because you easily click your TV on and you stream through your platforms and you you watch whatever you want. But to get anything made is a, is a hurdle within itself. Um, and this one is a particularly beautiful piece. Um, now, I want, I want you to hang tight for a minute. But I do want to thank everybody for joining me today for our Prepare for Launch reunion. The John Bull story yeah. deserves to be told. Sometimes situations in life rob us of our dreams. But John Bull, of course, prov proved that life is about adjustments. So thanks to each of you for bringing that story to life. Thank you. Now, thank you, guys. That's about all the time we have for today. But Real Conversations with Jacob Young is sponsored by Boys Town. At Boys Town, their slogan is, he ain't heavy, he's my brother. And for over 100 years, Boys Town has been saving children, healing families. They're only one call away, and they're always there to help. So please go to boystown.org for all the details on how to access Boys Town's health services, or just simply go to yourlifeyourvoice.org. And if you are in crisis or need immediate help, please call the trained counselors at the Boys Town National Hotline. 800-448-3000, 800-448-3000, or text VOICE to 20121. Thanks for joining me on Real Conversations. I'm Jacob Young, 
Until next time, love yourself and love each other.